So what is the best retirement plan out there? Is it stocks, social security, pensions, you know, what, is it 401k or IRAs? What is it, right? That's what I wanna talk about in this video today. All right, so imagine this. Imagine that you've been working for years, slaving away in some ways. You've been putting your money away and getting to the point where your money's now working harder for you so you no longer have to work for it. And now you're at the point that you can now retire or at least become work optional, where you work because you want to, not because you have to. Does that sound like a great life? Now, if not, turn off this video because if you don't care about being work optional or retiring, I don't know why you're here in the first place, right? Just move on. But for those of you that say, yes, I want that better life. I wanna be work optional. I wanna have that option to retire. Even if I don't wanna retire fully, I want that option. What's the best way to do it? What's the best strategy to do that? Let's just dig right into that right now. All right, now first and foremost, let's talk about one of these, which is like a pension. Now pensions are like a dying breed. This is like the thing of our parents and grandparents that uh, you know, a company, you work for a company for so many years, and then after so many years, they'll say, here's how much per month we'll pay you, right? Like this benefit, this income benefit that we'll give you. Now, unless you work for the government, unless you're like a teacher or a government worker, these are almost non-existent to this day. But I, mean, I know I've had clients in the military, we've had teachers and things like that. There is that promise of pensions. You know, there is that promise that can give you another additional income stream at a certain age. Usually it's at least 55 to 60, a rare occasion you might be able to get it younger, but it's usually going into your 60s that you're gonna experience this. I know that not all of you, I mean, if you're like me, you don't always wanna to wait till your 60s to have that benefit, right? But it's nice when it does kick in. So just understand that pensions are great, but they are a dying breed, and unless, you're, again, you're a government worker, you're probably not gonna see it. And that kinda of leads to the second thing. Speaking of government, there's Social Security. Now, Social Security is a little bit of an issue right now because they're already worried about it running out of money in, really within the next decade. In fact, whoever's gonna be you know, in Congress in like you know, 2024 to 2028, they're gonna to have to figure out very quickly what they're gonna to do to keep it funded. Because right now there's more people taking out of it than putting into it. And so one, one of two things is gonna happen. Either it goes away completely, it drops, something's gotta, something's gotta change right now. Or there could be a third option, they just raise your taxes a lot higher. And I'm sure you're gonna love that, right? I know that I'm being sarcastic here, but it's true. Like, I don't think Social Security will go away. I don't believe in that option that will just disappear because if you've been paying into it your whole life, are you going to vote it out and say, no, nah, that's okay, I don't want any. No, you're not going to do that, right? So I think it's going to be around, but the, the uncertainty is, will it be as much as we think? Because even right now, uh, most people, the average Social Security is only about $1,600 a month. What if that's dropped by like 30%, right? What if all of a sudden went from $1,600 a month down to maybe 1000 a month even? Well, now you can't really rely on that either. You're not gonna be able to live a decent life saving up in that. And even I've had clients that have the promise of 3,000 a month. Again, what if it drops to 2,000 a month? We just don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And so that relies upon us to create our own future, to take control of our own finances. Otherwise, we're just becoming a victim to whatever government games are being played and that's just a dumb thing to deal with. And that's where it kind of leads into our traditional plans, right? The ones that you've probably been taught about your well, maybe not your whole life, but at least your whole adult life, especially if you've been working a job, you've been sold and pitched on the 401k plan, maybe it's been about IRAs, Roth IRAs, you know, annuities, all these kind of things. Basically the thing that a financial advisor would tell you you should put your money into. Now, I remember the 401k plan, when I first got into the corporate world, uh, before I started this business, I remember sitting down in a, in a nice room. And this is after I hit my six month mark, so now I was eligible for the company 401k plan. And as I'm sitting in that room, this woman gets up, she's probably no older than about 30, 32 years old, and she says, okay guys, this is the 401k plan. This is the best thing ever, because you're gonna put money in this, and when you put money in it now, it's gonna be good, because it'll grow for many, many years. We'll throw money in too, so you get free money into it, and then eventually, when you get to be old and shriveled, then guess what happens? You won't be, you, you'll be actually be in a lower tax bracket. You won't need to live on much. So you'll be able to pull the money out later because you won't pay that much in taxes. And yeah, you'll pay taxes, but you won't need money anyways because you're old and you don't have a life. Uh, okay, she didn't say that last part, but it was kind of that tune, right? She said that same thing. It's like, yeah, when you're older, you don't need as much money because your kids are moved out. I wanna ask, if, if for those of you, if I put a comment below, if you're maybe in your 50s or 60s right now, let me ask you, has your expenses gone down or up in the last 10 years or so. 
Every time I've asked this question, they've always said it's gone up. Unless like they got divorced and then their kids all moved out and they're like, well, now it's just me. I got nothing, you know, it's just me now. Then yeah, sometimes the costs go down. But for the most part, they're like, no, for the last 10 or 15 years, my costs have only gone up because of inflation, right? Well, think about this. Even if tax rates don't go up, just because of inflation alone, remember the more money you have to pull out and or make, you get taxed more, you get a tax higher percentage. Guess what? As inflation goes up, even if tax rates don't go up, you know, if they keep it the same, which I think they'll go up anyways, because they're at the lowest they've been in almost in history, but if they don't go up, still because of inflation, you have to pull out money, you're gonna pay more in tax because you have to pull out more. What you might think you only need $50,000 today might be $100,000 tomorrow a year you need to pull out, and that's a higher tax rate. Maybe you're in your 20s or 30s, and maybe by the time, even just to live a decent middle-class lifestyle, just to be comfortable, it wouldn't be too shocking that you might have to live on 250 or 300,000 a year. Well, yeah, they're gonna tax the crap out of that, aren't they? You know, then you might have to pull out more money just to make up for the taxes, depending on how much taxes you have to pay. So although it's good to have a retirement plan, it's something at least, it's not a guarantee of financial certainty. In fact, what I've found is when I've done research on this, like Fidelity, for example, Fidelity's 401k plans actually do almost 3% worse on their target date funds than the actual stock market. Now, when someone says, well, I get the match, I get the free money. Here's the problem, guys. Guess what? When you put it into a compound interest calculator, guess what that match of free money gives you? Roughly only about a two or 3% more return. So you're almost better off investing outside of a 401k than you are inside a 401k because those plans don't pay well. Because of all the costs coming out, as well as the fact that they don't always perform as well as the stock market, the problem is that you're actually getting free money to just make up for the bad performance. You might as well just invest outside of it and not get the free money. Does that make sense? So I know it's a shocker. This probably kills a lot of sacred cows for you guys, but this is the truth. This is a real facts coming from Fidelity. Also, here's another fact. Also using Fidelity, who has 45 million accounts. They have 45 million clients in America. Remember, there's 300 million Americans. That's a big chunk of Americans. Did you know that out of the 45 million, only 810,000 have at least a million dollars in them? 810,000, that's, that's less than 2%, guys. Less than 2% have over a million dollars. And remember, if you're trying to pull out the real returns, like when you're trying to pull out money, good financial advisors will tell you to only pull out 3% a year. That's if you're trying to retire at normal retirement age. If you're younger, you should only pull out 2% a year. So if you're pulling out 3% a year on a million dollars, that's 30,000 a year. That's not much to live on, is it? And so even if you get some social security, but again, you have to wait till at least your mid, you know, early to mid sixties before you can actually pull out a decent amount from social security. And you don't even get your full benefit until you wait till at least age 67, which just means you're working longer, working harder, and possibly less years of your life to enjoy of actual retirement. So is there another alternative? Is there something better than just doing that versus IRAs and Roth IRAs? By the way, Roth IRAs, you can only put away like six or 7,000 a year. So even if you want that tax-free income, you don't have that much to save. So what other things can you do? Could you do things like infinite banking? Yes, infinite banking could work. It may or may not make more than what you could make in the stock market, depending on when you got in versus when you got out. I wouldn't guarantee you that anything that you could do better than the stock market, but that's a place that's actually certain and it's tax-free income and you can save more than you could do it on a Roth IRA. But on top of that, what else could you be doing? There's things like called alternative investments. Now, alternative investments, here's the thing. These are investments that are outside Wall Street. This doesn't mean that these are bad or risky investments. It just means that they're not sold to you by financial advisors. Because here's the thing, isn't it true that financial advisors really only like to recommend things that they can sell you, that they can make money on? That's exactly it. That's what I realized when I was a financial advisor. I realized after four years in that industry, I was just a salesman in a suit. I was just selling you the things that I was able to offer from financial companies that I work for. The companies like Fidelity, like the Merrill Lynch's, right? and all those kind of companies, they're telling me what to sell you. And the problem is, even the stock market, the real return of the stock market is only about eight, just over 8% right now for the last 30 years. 8%, not 12% like some people claim, eight. That's not a lot, guys. That's not much to live on. And so when you're trying to make your money work for you, it's hard to save up enough money and have a high enough return to then live off more. That's why so few people, even in Fidelity, have over a million dollars. And even of those people that have over a million dollars, 35% of them surveyed said they think it'll take a miracle for them to be able to retire because if you have a million bucks, living on 30,000 years is just not enough. 
And so alternative investments give you a different perspective, a different way of doing it. These are things like real estate investments. By the way, real estate is kind of cool because it has a real asset behind it. Real estate, right? That's what it means. It's real. They're real assets. What's even better is when you can actually create better cash flow from it. For example, a lot of the investments that I've done myself, even a lot of our clients have been doing, make at least 10% a year. This is different. This is where my eyes opened and why I left being a financial advisor. So when I was a financial advisor, you know, I remember teaching people that stock market's the way to go, and then you pull off 3% to live on. But what blew my mind when I left that to go do real estate investing is, if I can make 10% on my money, and that's always 10%, and I don't have to even dip into my principal, I'm making more. For example, say you have that same million dollars, instead of 30,000 a year, if I'm making 10%, I can live on $100,000 a year. And with some real estate investments, they even have some tax advantages where you might be able to pay less in taxes and keep more of that money. So even though it's the same money, it just works harder. This is also great because there's no date. Like if I'm doing a 401k or an IRA, they say I have to wait till I'm 59 and a half before I can pull off, pull money out of it and not have to pay a 10% penalty plus taxes, right? With real estate, I can retire whenever I want. This is how I was actually able to retire when I was 28 the first time. Then even after recession, I went over a million dollars in debt because the whole world was blowing up with real estate and everything else. I was able to dig back out of that hole and retire for the second time in 2016 when I was 39 years old. And that's the cool thing, guys, is that you can get there much faster and have real assets backing it up if you can make better returns. Now, I'm not promising you always make 10% returns. What I am saying, though, is that you can actually create better income. It's not about compounding interest. It's about compounding income. Because if you can start to compound that income and get to work harder for you, you can actually get to that place of freedom faster. You can get to that place of work optional even faster than waiting on government to get you your social security, hoping you get a pension, if you, there's ever a pension involved, hoping for your 401k or your IRA that may or may not work because 98% of the time or more, it hasn't worked for people. Well, guess what? This actually has been proven to work for millions of us. So why not do what's proven to work? And by the way, the thing that your financial advisor is afraid of you doing because they don't get paid a dime off of it because they don't get paid to tell you to go put money in real estate, which is why you never hear financial advisors tell you to do this. But on this channel, you will hear us talk about that. That's why I gotta be fully honest with you guys. Like This is where it's worked for me and many, many of our clients because we've actually done something that really works. So guys, the best retirement plan is one that's customized to you and your goals. If you wanna figure out how much passive income you could create in your own situation, go to moneyripples.com, click on the passive income calculator, click on that, and you'll actually be able to find out how much passive income could be possible in your situation. Check that out right now.